අවසරයි අපේ හාමුදුරුවනේ good afternoon everyone i cordially welcome you all for the ninth lecture of the short course on cultural linkages towards an asian ideology 2022 2023 today we have invited venerable bopitiya sumangala thero to conduct a lecture on light of asia in the proper light to fulfill the learning outcomes of the short course the program for today is such that the lecture is scheduled to be for 75 minutes with a short break of 5 minutes followed by a discussion hamuduruwane we are profoundly honored to have you with us here today and you are warmly welcome to deliver the lecture thank you mind with pressure and raga tendency gives birth to pleasant relationship raga tendency pleasant relationship known as tanha Tanna means craving, craving for sense pleasure, craving for becoming, and craving for continuing. And there evolves new corruption of craving called Tanha Anusaya. With the arising of Moha intention, we get intoxicated with unpleasant sensation. we grasp the five aggregates entertaining our mind with displeasure and then those a tendency gives birth to unpleasant relationship known as patigha patigha means aversion and there evolves a new corruption of aversion called patigha anusaya 
with the arising of more intention, we get intoxicated with indecisive sensation between pleasure and displeasure. We grasp the five aggregates entertaining our mind with delusion. And moha tendency gives birth to indecisive relationship known as avijja. Avijja means ignorance. And there evolves a new corruption of ignorance called avijja anusaya. So, anusaya. Anusaya means new corruptions. Anu means new. Saya means Accumulation, accumulation of new corruptions. Then Anusaya deposits in our mind. Then we call them, or we call it Asaya. Saya means accumulation, accumulation of past corrupted experiences. Generally, Asaya is known as Asav. Asav. So Asaya or Asav, they both are basically the same. All right. So, pleasant, unpleasant, or indecisive. They all are blind relationships based on Raga, Dosa, and Moha. Therefore, Raga, Dosa, and Moha, they are bondages. They are three bondages. They are three poisons. They are three toxic intentions that our mind gets intoxicated with mundane sensations. This Intoxication is called asadu. Asadu. Asadu means psychological entertainment or psychological exuberance. Asadu. Therefore, asadu, the psychological entertainment, is the primary food for the mind for continued existence, called ahara. Ahara means the primary food for the mind for continued existence. Therefore, asadu is the primary food for the mind for continued existence of all sentient beings. That's why the Buddha proclaimed sabbe satta the psychological entertainment is the primary food for the mind for continued existence of all sentient beings. Therefore, our life is nothing but a constant research of psychological entertainment. The primary food for the mind for continued existence. Therefore, a research of asadu, it's called asad parison. Asad parison. In Magadhi, there is a highly important term called P. This term P represents all three kinds of attachments. This term P represents all three kinds of relationships, pleasant, unpleasant, and indecisive. In Magadhi, they are called peer, present, up peer, unpleasant, peer, up peer, indecisive between pleasure and displeasure. Therefore, this term P represents the attachment. The term P represents the cause, the attachment. So, what is the effect of the attachment? It's called P Dukkha. 
Therefore, the Buddha has given, Buddha has pointed out some common factors to extrapolate this P-based attachment or sun-based attachment and result in effect, look. For example, jati pi dukkha. Jati means the birth. Birth is not dukkha, but jati pi dukkha. Attachment, pleasant or unpleasant or indecisive. Birth, birth of what? The arising of an intention is a birth as, as well as delivering a baby. So, birth is not dukkha, but attachment to birth is dukkha. Jati pi dukkha. Jara pi dukkha. Jara means aging or becoming. Aging is not dukkha, but jara pi dukkha, attachment to aging is dukkha. Maranan pi dukkhan. Marana means the death, the ending, the disappearance. Death is not dukkha, but maranam pi dukkham. The attachment to death is dukkha. For example, the death of Bin Laden. Did the death of Bin Laden make Americans happy or not? The death of Bin Laden made Americans so happy. But what about the followers of Bin Laden? The Taliban. Did they enjoy with the death of Bin Laden? I don't think so. Probably they felt miserable with the death of Bin Laden. Therefore, same death. How is it possible that the same death makes one group happy and another group unhappy? Therefore, it's clear that death doesn't make us happy or unhappy, but the attachment. Attachment makes us happy and unhappy. Soka Parideva Dukkha Domanasa Upayasa Pi Dukkha. Pi, attachment to these conditions. Saronas, lamentation, psychological pain, physical pain, and physical and mental exert for continued existence. Attachment to these conditions is Dukkha. Pihi Sampayogo Dukku. Sampayogo. Association. Association is not Dukkha, but unpleasant association. Therefore, already there is PB's attachment. Unpleasant. Association with unpleasant is dukkha. Then, pihi vipayogo dukkha, the separation. Separation is not dukkha, but the separation from pleasant. Pihi vipayogo dukkha. Therefore, already there is a P based attachment, pleasant attachment. Yan pi chan nalabati tam pi dukkham. Not getting what one desires is dukkha. Not getting what one desires. Already there is attachment. Yam pi. Finally, sankitte na pancha upadana kanda dukkha. The five aggregates of attachment are dukkha. Therefore, the Buddha emphasized P-based 
attachment and the resulting effect, duk. So, you may have relationships based on these three kinds of attachment, pleasant, unpleasant, and indecisive. So you also can make a list of attachments like this. For example, boyfriend P. Dukkha. Boyfriend is not Dukkha, but attachment to boyfriend is Dukkha. Girlfriend P. Dukkha. Girlfriend is not Dukkha, but attachment to girlfriend is Dukkha. Mother-in-law P. Dukkha. Mother-in-law is not Dukkha, but attachment to mother-in-law is Dukkha. Daughter-in-law P. Dukkha. Daughter-in-law is not Dukkha, but attachment to daughter-in-law is Dukkha. Future P. Dukkha. Future is not Dukkha, but attachment to future is Dukkha. Past P. Dukkha. Past is not Dukkha but attachment to past is Dukkha. So, any attachment, pleasant, unpleasant, or indecisive, they are nothing but the five aggregates of attachment. Therefore, P-based attachment or sun-based attachment, it is the root cause for our existence. The attachment, it is the root cause for our suffering. Attachment brings misery. So no attachment, no cry. All right. So it's necessary to point out that with the arising of Samudaya, We engage with triple misconduct. With the arising of Samudaya, we engage with ten unwholesome actions. And we produce, we generate new karma. Verbal karma, physical karma, and psychological karma. Or they can be explained as Meritorious come, demeritorious come, and imperturbable come. They all are come. Therefore, this journey of causes and effects, this movement, this flow of actions and consequences, this movement, is called the wheel of Kam, Kam Chak. So we are immersed in a stream of causes and effects. Whether we like it or not, whether we perceive it or not, we are part of this universal mechanism called the wheel of Kam the wheel of life, practically the wheel of Dukkha. Therefore, nobody can refuse these two realities, Samudaya and Dukkha. That's why the Buddha called them truths. Samudaya is a universal truth and Dukkha is a universal truth. We make P-based attachments, pleasant, unpleasant, and indecisive. So, it's a truth. And our attachments bring us misery. So, it's, an, it's another truth. Therefore, already we are experiencing the truth of Samudaya and its effect, the truth of Dukkha.
In Magadhi, there is a term called Sandittiku. San means Raga, Dosa and Moha. Dittiko means to see, to experience, to understand. It is necessary to experientially understand the arising sun causes and their effects within oneself. It is necessary to experientially understand the arising of Samudaya and its effect, Dukkha, within oneself. It is called Sandittiku. Without having an experiential understanding of the arising Samudaya and its effect, it's impossible to be free of Dukkha. It's impossible to be free of Dukkha without being Sandittiko. Once we experience the arising causes, the arising Samudaya and the resulting Dukkha within ourself, we commence to do research, a path for liberation from Dukkha, a path for liberation from Dukkha. So it's a research, research to release the Dukkha. Research to release the attachment. Re research to abandon this journey of existence. It's called Arya Parisana. So, how can we liberate from this will of common? Now let's have a look at a dialogue related to this discussion. This uh, it's a dialogue between two persons. One person is called Aryat Asaji. Aryat Asaji was one of the first five disciples of the Buddha, one of the Panchavaggi Bhikkhu. Other person is called Upatissa. Upatissa was the household name of Arihat Sariputta. Upatissa had a childhood friend called Kolita. Upatissa and Kolita, they were two youngsters who were looking for a great teacher. They were looking for the absolute truth. One day, Upatissa saw that Arihat Asaji was walking along the road going for arms. And Upatissa was very impressed by the appearance and deportment of Aryat Asaji. Then Upatissa asked following questions. From whom or for whom have you become a monk? Who is your master? What is the teaching that you practice? Then Aryat Asaji replied, there is a great monk that comes from Sakya clan, a son of Sakya who became a monk. He is my teacher and I follow his teaching. I practice his teaching. Then Upadisa asked another question. What does your master teach? What is his theory? Then Aryat Asaji said this famous verse Ye Dhamma Hetu Prabhava Tesan Hetun Tathagatu Ah Tesan Chayu Nirodhu Evan Vadi Mahasamanu. At the end of this discussion, Upatissa instantly comprehended the essence of this teaching, and attained Sotapannahud. Then Upatissa went to his friend Kolita and referred 
this teaching to Kolitha. And Kolitha also attained Sotapanhood. Then Upadisa and Kolitha, they both went to the Buddha and attained Arihathood and became two chief disciples of the Buddha, famous Sariputta and Mughalla. So, what is the meaning of this famous verse? Ye dhamma hetuppa bhava. Dhamma. Dhamma means intentions. Hetu. Hetu means to cause. Pabhava. P means to repeat or to regenerate. Bhava means becoming or the seeds of defilements. Then whatever intentions that cause repeated becoming. Tesan hetun tathagatu aha tathagatu, the Buddha discovered, proclaimed, hetun causes. Tesan hetun, three sun causes. Tathagatu discovered, or tathagatu proclaimed. Three sun causes. Causes for what? Causes for dukkha. Causes for our existence. Causes for suffering. Causes for triple misconduct. So after discovering the three sun causes, what did Tathagatu do? Te sanchayo nirodu. Nirodu. What is nirodu? The pure state of the mind which must be achieved is called nirodu. In English, the term nirodu is translated as cessation. But the term nirodu is made up of two words. Ni plus rodu. Ni means no, end or cessation. Rod means unwholesome wheeling on mental objects. Then nirodho means the cessation of unwholesome wheeling on mental objects. We must deliberately intervene to counter respond to the arising sun causes by generating wholesome intentions. It is the path to uproot the arising sun causes. It is the path to purify the arising sun causes. In Magadhi, the term we or we the means the separation or the detachment. The separation from the arising raga intention is called vitaraga. The separation from the arising dosa intention is called vita dosa. The separation from the arising moha intention is called vita moha. So, Raga, Dosa, and Moha, they are commonly called Sun. Then the separation from Sun is called V Sun. Actions based on Sun, they are called Sankhara. Sankhara, actions based on Sun. Then the separation from Sankhara is called Visankhara. Visankhara. So let's suppose that we are able to practice this purification process. Converting the arising intentions from unwholesome state to wholesome state. That means we change the causes. 
that means we purify the causes. Then, if causes are purified, now what would happen to the effect that we call the dukkha? Free from attachment, free from dukkha. Free from attachment, therefore, free from sorrowness, free from lamentation, free from psychological pain, free from physical pain, free from existence. Free from raga bondage, free from dosa bondage, free from moha bondage. It's called Nibbana. No bondages. Nibbana. Free from Raga bondage, free from Dosa bondage, free from Moha bondage. Evan Vadi Maha Samano. It is the teaching of this great monk. Maha Samano, great monk. So now we have got the full meaning. Whatever intentions that cause repeated becoming, Tathagato proclaimed three sun causes and the cessation of unwholesome wheeling on mental objects based on those three sun causes, it is the teaching of this great monk. So, now question is, what is this path? How can we achieve the pure state of the mind called Nirodhu? What is this purification path? It's called Ariyo Eightfold Path. Ariyo Eightfold Path. In Magad, it's called Ariyo Attangiko Maggu. Ariyo Attangiko Maggu. Eightfold because it is composed of eight factors. Ariyo, A, Ryo. A means to abandon. Ria means the journey of existence. Then, the path of eight factors. That must be comprehended in order to abandon the journey of existence. It's called Aryo Eightfold Path. This path, Aryo Eightfold Path, is called Samma Patipada 2. Patipada means the path. San Ma. Ma means to liberate. San means Rag, Dosa, and Moha. Three sun causes. So, Samma Patipada, because this path is composed of eight Sanma factors. The first one, Samma Ditti, Ditti means view, view or vision. Then, Ma means to liberate, Sun means Raga, Dosa, and Moha. Then, the vision on liberating from Raga, Dosa, and Moha. The second one, Samma Sankapo. Sankapo means intentions. Intentions for liberating from rag, dosa, and moha. Samma Vacha. Vacha means words. Word in free of rag, dosa, and moha. Samma Kammanto. Kamma means Kamma. Anta means ending. Then ending all the Kamma associated with rag, dosa, and moha. Samma Ajibu. A means to release or to abandon. Jiva means livelihood. Then, the renunciation of the livelihood for continued existence based on Raga, Dosa, and Moha. Samma Vayama. Vayama means effort. Effort for liberating from Raga, Dosa, and Moha. Samma Sati. Sati means, Sati is the new measuring scale. New theory introduced by the Buddha. Sati means the correct application of the theory of cause and effect. Then, Samma Sati. 
the correct application of the theory of cause and effect for liberating from raga, dosa, and moha. Finally, samma sati, uh, samma, sorry, samma samadhi. Samadhi means concentration. Concentration for liberating from raga, dosa, and moha. Therefore, this path of eight factors, Sanma Patipada or Aryo Eightfold Path is called Majjima Patipada 2. Patipada means always path. Ma means to liberate. Majji means intoxication. Intoxication on Raga, Dosa and Moha. Then Majjima Patipada means the path for liberation from intoxication on Raga, Dosa and Moha. It's called Majjima Patipada. Majjima Patipada. But Majjima Patipada, Majjima, there are two words. But Majjima Patipada is translated to English as middle path. But the term middle is a misuse. The term middle is inappropriate with the content of the dham. Therefore, Buddha never proclaimed the middle path, but Majjima Patipada, path for liberation from intoxication based on rag, dosa, and moha. All right. So now question is, how can we apply this Aryo Eightfold Path? Because we have to apply this psychological process in a split second against the arising raga, dosa, and moha. So, first of all, we need to get a better idea about the arising of raga, dosa, and moha. Every individual carries his own accumulation of past corrupted experiences called asava. Past corrupted experiences. Therefore, every individual carries an accumulation of past corrupted experiences in Magadhi called asava. Therefore, when one of our sense base comes into contact with appropriate object, we have to consult our asava for getting an idea about what our sense base senses. Therefore, we are slaves of our asava. We are slaves of our past corrupted experiences. Therefore, we have to do such kind of measuring, such kind of comparison relative to our past corrupted experiences. Asava. Therefore, if that comparison is between the extreme of pleasure and the extreme of unpleasure, that comparison, that wrong comparison is called moha. With the arising of moha, our mind gets deluded. Then, deluded mind runs to the extreme of pleasure. It's called the arising of raga. If deluded mind runs to the extreme of displeasure, it's called the arising of dosa. Therefore, it becomes visible that our mind does two kinds of performances. The first performance is wrong comparison, the arising of moha. It's called in Magadhi Manomaya Kaya. Manomaya Kaya. Kaya means action, Manomaya means mind made. So the arising of Moha is a mind made action. But the arising of 
Raga dosa, the arising of intentions. It's called chitta jakaya. Kaya means action. Chitta ja action. Chitta. The duty of chitta is the regeneration of intentions or judgments called chetana. Chetana. Therefore, it becomes visible that mind does two kinds of performances. So, now, let's have a look at what happens with the arising of Sankhara mind. All right. So, first of all, when one of our sense base comes into contact with appropriate object, our perception gets corrupted. Recognize corrupted perception. So we look, we recognize the perception as nitya sukha atta. It's called in Magadhi. Sanya vipallas, distortions of perception, distortions of perception. Then, distorted perception corrupts our view. Wrong view is activated. In Magadhi, it is called Dikti Vipallasa. And simultaneously, we grasp the five aggregates and the egocentric notion of I called Manyamano is formed. Therefore, the arising of these three conditions is called moha, the arising of moha. And moha leads to deluded mind. The tenth unwholesome action has occurred. Then, deluded mind pollutes. Chitta. Deluded mind pollutes Chitta. If deluded mind runs to the extreme of pleasure, it is called the arising of Raga. Raga leads powerful passion. Eighth unwholesome action has occurred. If, if deluded mind runs to the extreme of displeasure, it is called it is called the arising of dosa. Dosa leads to powerful mental discord. Ninth unwholesome action has occurred. Therefore, deluded mind Hollywood's Chitta. In Magadhi, there is a famous verse, actually the first verse, first verse of the Dhammapada. Mano Pugbang Gama Dhamma Mano Sitta Mano Mea Manasa Che Padutena Bahasativa Karotiva. Mind is the forerunner. 
or intentions. Mind is the greater. Mind made Adi. Deluded mind pollutes chitta. Manasa che padutte. Manasa means mind. Che means chitta or intention. Then deluded mind and polluted chitta. Corrupt word and deed. With the arising of Raga, Dosa and Moha, we are inclined to commit verbal unwholesome actions and physical unwholesome actions. With the arising of Raga, Dosa and Moha, we engage with ten unwholesome actions or we engage with triple misconduct. So what is the effect or the consequence of engaging with ten unwholesome actions? It's called Dukkha. Dukkha follows one as well as the wheel of cart follows ox. So now question is, how can we liberate from these ten unwholesome actions? How can we liberate from this triple misconduct? What is the remedy? The remedy was discovered by the Buddha. The remedy has only three words. It's called vipassana. Vipassana is the remedy. What is Vipassana? Anicca anupassana tena vipassana, dukkha anupassana tena vipassana, anatta anupassana tena vipassana. Anicca dukkha anatta. Anicca dukkha anatta. The application of Anicca dukkha anatta to replace the arising perception nicca sukha atta is called vipassana. Anicca dukkha anatta it's called tilakkana too. Tilakkana. Vipassana. V means separation. Pass. Dissociation. Then separation and the dissociation of the arising mental impurities. It's called Vipassana. So, The application of vipassana or oh, anicca dukkha anatta against the arising nicca sukha atta is called ana pana sati samadhi. Samadhi means concentration, ana means to associate, pana means to dissociate. Sati. Sati means the new measuring scale, new theory introduced by the Buddha. The correct application of the theory of cause and effect. Then we have to concentrate to associate and dissociate according to the theory of cause and effect. It's called Ana Pana Sati Samadhi. Associate anicca nature of the perception and dissociate nicca nature of the perception. Associate 
dukkha, nature of the perception, and dissociate, sukha, nature of the perception. Associate, anatta, nature of the perception, and dissociate, atta, nature of the perception. Then, with the application of vipassana, anicca, dukkha, anatta, we associate reality. And we dissociate false imagination. Therefore, ana pana sati samadhi introduced by the Buddha is a full fledged cognitive process that purifies our mind. Then, with the application of anicca, dukkha, anatta, vipassana against the arising perception, nature, sukha, atta, instead of wrong view, samma view is activated. Seriously, not only samma view, all samma eight sanma factors, they all are activated. The wheel of Dhamma gets set in motion. Instead of grasping the five aggregates, now the liberation from the five aggregates of attachment is fulfilled. It's called Amanyaman. So, Mind is purified with the application of vipassana. Then pure mind purifies chitta. Manasa che pasannen. Pa means regenerate, san means ragadesa moha, nena means ending. So Mind is purified, chitta is purified. Then, word is purified and deed is purified. The liberation from ten unwholesome actions is fulfilled. The separation, sorry, the liberation from ten unwholesome actions results wholesome. Therefore, there are 10 unwholesome actions, but there are no 10 wholesome actions. Wholesome means wholesome. Mental purity. Ku means mental impurities. Sala means wash out, deracinate. It's called wholesome. So, the liberation from triple misconduct is fulfilled. That means Ario Eightfold Path, the wheel of Dhamma gets set in motion. Seriously, not only Ario Eightfold Path, with the application of Vipassana, all 37 buddhic attributes are activated in a split second. Then the path is fulfilled. Majjima path is fulfilled. Dukkha Nirodha Gamini Patipada Arya Satcha is experienced. Then, not only Majjima Patipada, as a result of Majjima Patipada, all four Arya truths are experienced in a split second with the application of Vipassana. 
the theory of the buddha is called paticca samuppad pati means to integrate icca means innate mental desire so what happens when we integrate with our innate mental desire san uppad the arising of raga dosa and moha or the arising of five aggregates of attachment patich san uppad what is the effect of the arising of five aggregates of attachment it's called dukkha therefore the truth of samudaya and its effect dukkha the wheel of karma is explained by ignorance rooted paticca samuppad and the path the truth of path is explained by wholesome rooted paticca samuppad and the final result nirodu is explained by the cessation of ignorance or nirodha paticca samuppad so co arya truths are explained by the trinity of paticca samuppad the trinity of the theory of cause and effect an analogy would be something like that ignorance rooted paticca samuppad it is the sickness whole some rooted paticca samuppad it is the medicine then the final result the liberation therefore if one experiences four arya truths he experiences paticca samuppad too if one experiences paticca samuppad he experiences four arya truths too therefore this is the theory of the buddha this is the theory he realized sitting under a bow tree and this is the theory he taught for 45 years all right so it's explained by the cessation of
sitting under a good tree. And this is the theory he taught for 45 years. All right. So, so if there are any questions, now we have more five minutes. Thank you, sir. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to deliver the vote of thanks on behalf of the students of the short course on cultural linkages towards an Asian ideology 2022 and 23. Mm -hmm. First, I would like to thank our guest lecturer, Venerable Bopiti Sumangala Thero, for sharing his time and knowledge with us and delivering this lecture. Reverend Sir, we are blessed to have you contribute to this course. Next, I wish to thank Dr. M. M. Jayavadana, Mr. Kitsiri Amaratunga, the Dean of the Faculty of Management, Social Sciences and Humanities, Dr. Hemanta Premaratna, the course coordinator, and the other staff of KDU who have brought this lecture today. Thank you. Last but not least, I thank all the participants from our university for successful event and I believe uh, uh, for joining us today. Your participation has made this lecture a successful event, and I believe it has provided you with an insight into teaching of Buddha. To conclude, let me once more express my gratitude to Venerable Bopiti Sumangala Thero for delivering today's lecture. 